Everyone, I'm thrilled you all are here today. We've been working our way through the Bible in chronological order. That means the order in which events occurred. Did any of you bring your Bibles today? That's awesome. The Bible is God's word. It teaches us everything we need to know about God and about ourselves in order to love and live for him. One thing we can find lots of in the Bible are promises that God has made to his people. God has made many promises and in many cases we can read about the way God has kept each and every one of them. But what about the promise God has made that hasn't happened yet? That's what I want us to think about for the next few weeks. But before we begin, let's discuss what God, God's word is. Let's all get up on our feet and get ready to worship our God. Ready? Count down with me. Three, two, one. Hit it. Staring into your eyes makes my heart Suddenly brought to life when I met you Reaching beyond the skies, running deep, stretching wide Perfect love realized, here with you Now this love is for real, you will never let go, never let go just words left beyond my control, out of control. This is real love, this is real love. This is real love. Jesus, I'm found in your 
love to worship. Worship always prepares my heart ready to receive the message and lesson of today. But first, let's go over our ICC Kids values. Our first value is love God. We love God because He loved us first. Our second value is we love people. We love people because God loves all people. Our third value is have fun. We have fun because God gives us joy. And our fourth and last value is make a difference. We make a difference because Jesus did. Great job, everyone. One thing we can do to move forward loving God is, our, is to pray and learn about the Bible. If you have your Bible with you today, hold it up. This is the Bible of God, God's Word. It tells us the wonderful story God's plan to rescue sinners. We use a big picture question to help us focus our learning and direct us to see specific truth, things that the Bible can teach us about God and ourselves. For the next few weeks, I want us to think about this question and answer. Does God keep His promises? Yes, God always keeps His promises because He is faithful. This is important to understand because it allows us to understand that whenever we find a promise in the scripture that hasn't come true yet, it means God isn't done with the part He has His plan yet. We can study God's word and see many examples of promises that God has already fulfilled and that help us give hope for promises that we must keep waiting on. Here, I'll show you what I mean. Our key passage comes from the book of Numbers in which God's people were wandering through the wilderness. They often struggle to trust God, but God wanted them to know that He is faithful and keeps all His promises. God doesn't lie or change. He is perfect in His plans. We can trust Him to keep all His promises. Let's say our memory verse together. God is not a man that He should lie, neither a son of man that He should repent. Hath He said, shall He not do it? Or hath He spoken, shall He not make it good? Numbers 23, 19. We started with the first book of the Bible, Genesis, which means in the beginning. In the beginning, God created everything for His glory. He made His people in His image. When sin entered the world uh, through Adam and Eve, God revealed His plan to bring people back to Himself through a descendant, His own son. Today's Bible story comes from the second book of the Bible, Exodus. Exodus means departure. In the stories from Exodus, we will see how God remained faithful to his promises. Many years had passed since God used Joseph to rescue his people from fam famine by bringing them into Egypt. Now, however, God's people were enslaved and needed to be set free. God raised up a new rescuer to deliver all his people out of Egypt and lead them to the promised land. We'll see how all this started in our story, God Called Moses. Joseph's family in Egypt grew even after Joseph, his brothers, and their families died. All the people in this family were known as Israelites because they came from Joseph's father, Jacob, who was also called Israel. When a new Pharaoh came to power in Egypt, he was afraid of the Israelites. Pharaoh worried they would all fight against him. So Pharaoh made the Israelites slaves, and he gave them very hard work to do. Still, their families grew, so Pharaoh ordered for all their baby boys to be killed. Around this time, a woman gave birth to a son. She hid him as long as she could, and then she put him in a basket and set the basket along the bank of the Nile River. Soon, Pharaoh's daughter went to the river to take a bath. She found the baby and felt sorry for him. Pharaoh's daughter wanted the baby to be her son. The princess named the baby Moses. Moses grew up as a prince in Egypt. One day, he saw an Egyptian man mistreating an Israelite man. Moses killed the Egyptian and then fled from Egypt. He worked as a shepherd in another land for many years. Back in Egypt, the Israelite people were miserable. They cried out to God, and God heard them. He had a plan to take them. One day, Moses saw a bush on fire. The bush was not burning up. Suddenly, God called from the bush, Moses, Moses. Moses replied, here I am. God told Moses to take off his sandals because Moses was standing on holy ground. Then God said, I have seen how my people are suffering. I want you to lead them out of Egypt to a good land I have for them. What if they ask for your name, Moses said. What should I tell them? I am who I am. God said, tell them, I am has sent me to you. 
Well, what if they don't believe me? Moses asked. So, God gave Moses three miraculous signs to prove that God had appeared to him. Moses' staff would turn into a snake. His hand would become diseased and then healed. And water from the river would turn into blood. But Moses still made excuses. He said, please send someone else. God was angry, but agreed to send Moses' brother, Aaron, with him. So Moses went to Egypt. God saved Moses' life and called him to rescue God's people from slavery. The calling of Moses points to a greater calling and rescue, the call of Jesus to come to earth to save God's people. Jesus gave up his life to save us from slavery to sin. Wow, what a story. The Israelites were slaves in Egypt for 400 years. Life under Pharaoh was hard. How do you think Jacob, Moses' mom, felt when she held him in her arms as a baby? She was probably afraid that he would have a hard life too, or even be killed. She hid her baby in the basket and Moses was discovered and adopted by Pharaoh's daughter. So Moses grew up in the palace as a part of Pharaoh's family. God protected baby Moses and had a plan for him. What happened that caused Moses to leave Egypt? Moses killed an Egyptian. He fled to the wilderness. When Moses was 80 years old, God spoke to him through what? A burning bush. God called Moses to confront Pharaoh and deliver the Israelites from Egypt. Was Moses willing to go? Not exactly. Moses made an excuse and even asked God to send someone else. But God promised he would go with Moses and he told Moses what to say. When Moses still felt afraid, God allowed him to take his brother Aaron with him. God had rescued Moses as a baby to be a part of his plan to lead the Israelites from captivity, and God would be with Moses the entire way. What do we learn about God in these chapters? We learn that God is faithful and he hears us and he is in control. We also learn God's name. What did God tell Moses to call him when speaking to the Israelites? God said his name was, I am who I am. Sometimes it translates to the written, written word as I am because I am. I will be who I will be. All three answers describe that God is sovereign. He never changes. Sovereign means that God is in control and will accomplish or do whatever is pleasing to him. By telling Moses his name, God reminded Moses how great he is and he is in control. Open your Bible to Exodus 2, 23 to 24. God kept his promise to Abraham when the Israelites called out to God in their suffering, God had a plan to give them the land he promised Abraham. Does God keep his promises? Yes, God always keeps his promises because he is faithful. God saved Moses' life and called him to rescue God's people from slavery. They called the calling of Moses points to greater rescue, the call of Jesus to come to save the earth and save God's people. Jesus gave up his life to save us from slavery to sin. Let's pray. God, you are constant and always keep your word. Thank you for hearing us when we pray to you and for coming to us when we are afraid. Help us to faithfully keep our promises like you keep yours. Amen. Hope to see you next week. Bye.